I said like on these right here, all I'm looking for is a general idea of knowing, first off, which way to turn, clockwise or counterclockwise, and then just making sure you can kind of get an idea of which you know, way is 25, negative 25 from there. So like on letter B, as we said, first off, when we rotate that about point X and it's negative 25, one more time, what are we doing? Clockwise or counterclockwise? Okay, negative 25 is going clockwise. So our default is going to go counter, and counterclockwise is positive. So because it's negative, yep, we're going clockwise. And then 25 degrees is not a big turn. So all we're doing here is, again, just trying to get an idea. But what I am looking for is um, that segment MB to get turned clockwise. So what I'm looking from you guys is just a small turn. So what, M and B is kind of coming down and uh, what, to the left a little bit like that. But I don't want to see it kind of coming up in that direction because it's a negative turn off that. A negative turn is, then she just said was what, clockwise, right? So I'm looking for something, you know, like that. Nothing major. We're not getting anything crazy with that using our pro character and compass and patty paper and all that, I just want you to know, hey, I should have it turn that direction. Something simple like that. Okay? So, anything else from last night's sign? This is your time to ask about, Sam. Well, you can do it two on the back. Two on the back? Sure. Let's take a look there, guys. Flip it. Two on the back. Um, all right. Oops. On two with the back. Oh, okay. This is a nice SAT one. Okay, so with this one here, first thing I noticed is we're talking about some line segments on a quarter plane with a point. Myself, I'm going right to kind of sketching out uh, a quick grid there to get a visual of what's going on. And then that line segment on the grid joins 0, 5 to the origin. So think about where 0, 5 is at. So 0, 5 is where? Right here. And to the origin, so this is the segment we are talking about to start off with. After rotation, the slope of that segment is zero. So what is the direction and angle of rotation? So right now, as it's situated, it's vertical. And what's the slope of any vertical segment? The slope is what? Undefined. undefined. The slope is undefined. And now when we rotate it, the slope is zero. So what does a line of zero have to be? It has to be horizontal. Now, does it tell me which direction to go? No. no. So we could have gone what? Or positive 90. Either one is fine. So that new segment could have rotated 90 clockwise or 90 counterclockwise. You really don't care. Either one of those wouldn't have been appropriate. So off of here, um, you, I, I'm just looking for 90 or negative 90 and clockwise or counterclockwise. Yes. So, yeah, with the direction angle of rotation, you could just say, um, you could just say 90, you said, uh, you said negative on yours. So negative 90 would be a what? Clockwise, right? So 90 degrees clockwise about the origin. That's fine. Negative 90 about the origin is fine, too. All those, you got more than one answer in them. I'm looking for clearly the 90 off of that, and then. Don't overthink it. Anything else anybody's got off of there? Oh, no, it's been twice. Okay, make sure your name's on it, throw in the basket. And let's get out your notes. Let's pick up where we left off yesterday with the last lesson, actually. Last lesson, I don't know what page, page something or other. 143, everybody. And one more time, if you don't have patty paper, grab yourself some patty paper. Okay, we will need some patty paper today. <coughs> 143, everybody. Today's last lesson here is not a bad one at all. There's just a lot to kind of talk about because looking back at it this morning, um, we're getting into symmetry. We briefly talked about symmetry here before. Um, so we're going to talk more about that here today. And like I said, this is going to take us over two days. There's some stuff here. 
that's good. There's some stuff there that uh, is not, sorry, the stuff that's not there. I'm going to add that in tomorrow. So 143, one more time. And let's just quickly start off with when I say the word opposite on there, what's the opposite of negative 8? Yeah, don't get that confused with reciprocal. Opposite reciprocal, we combine those together. We talked about that at the beginning of the year with the slope. But if I say, what's the opposite of negative 8? You say 8. Now, with those two points on the number line there, that negative 8 and 8, if I wanted to kind of fold those on top of one another, where would be my what we call line of symmetry at? Where would that line of symmetry be at? Right there at 0, right? And what about 9? What's the opposite of 9 going to be? Uh, yeah, negative 9 off of there. Did that line of symmetry change at all? No. So we know that 0 is right there in the middle. And with that, how do we know those two numbers are opposites of one another? Yeah, that line of reflection that we had talked about uh, a couple weeks ago, a week ago, I don't know. It's the same distance from the line of reflection. We said it's equal distance, right? So how do we know the two numbers on the other line? Um, they are the same distance from zero. Okay? So we have symmetry. We're going to have two types of symmetry we're going to look at here today. Symmetry obviously happens all over the place. You yourself have symmetry. If you were to just kind of draw a line right down the middle of you, for the most part, you should be pretty much symmetrical. And then there's always, you know, some of the celebrities that got like very symmetrical features going on. But um, everybody's got symmetry going on with you. You see it appear a lot of times in, say, logos. Uh, they, uh, uh, businesses have symmetry going on. Reflectional and rotational is what we're going to look at. We're going to talk about the definition of rotational symmetry in just a few minutes um, because we do put a um, bit of a criteria on to the rotational symmetry. So we'll talk about that here as we work through today. But I think the first thing is we're going to get to do some work with the tabby paper. All right, so let's go ahead and flip it on the next page here. Whoops. Flip it on the next page. And what I want us to do is go through. We've got ourselves, what, six shapes up there. And the first thing I would like you to do is determine where you can take each shape so that you can fold it and half the figure lies exactly on the other half, okay? So take one shape at a time. And I know some of you can definitely visualize that. There might be a couple funky shapes up there that mm, I don't know. But as we look at these, let's just kind of quickly talk about it. That first one being the uh, what? What shape is that? Mm, hold on. That's six sides. That's a, yeah, it's a hexagon. Hexagon. Does that have a reflectional symmetry in there? Definitely. It has more than one, right? Hoping you're seeing that more than one. We clearly have one right down the middle vertically. And we also have one right yep, there horizontally. Now, do we have other ones hiding in there? Do you have some? Kind of lead to any parallel Okay, yeah. Kind of looking uh, diagonally right there, correct? So if you we're not sure about that kind of that diagonal as he was talking about there, the opposite sides. Take that patty paper and we can fold it or trace it down the middle, right? And we can get another pair off there. Can I get any other pairs out of that? Uh, or another, I not should say pair, but another line of symmetry going there. Okay. Circle. How many we got? Arc three. Arc three. Oh. Arc four. Oh, okay. or a lot, right? And what do we actually keep going? Give me a word for that. Infinite. Yeah, we got an infinite amount of lines and symmetry for that circle, don't we? Okay, on that next one, we talked about that one before. All right. Um, it's a little bit funky looking on the how it's turned like that. But what about that one? Do you think that has a line of symmetry there? So take your patty paper then, trace it on there. And see if you can somehow fold it on top of each other. Okay. Pretty sure there is a line of symmetry hiding there. Just not an obvious one because it's turned, Andrew. 
So as you're checking yourself, Andrew says there is one out there as well. Okay. So let's confirm where Andrew's seeing that. He's seeing it from kind of from one side to the other through those parallel sides, right through the middle of it, I believe. And I think that's what you're referring to, right, Andrew? Okay. So check that. Can you well, hold it on there? Are they the same like size? They they are. Oh. And on, when it's turned like this, it's hard to kind of tell on that. Maybe if you turn your book to where it's a little bit nicer, you might be able to kind of see that a little bit better. But your patty paper will confirm that for you, right? So when you fold that over, yeah, that does actually do that. Uh, the one that students always think that's hiding there is maybe a, a line of reflection that is diagonal from corner to corner. And my thought is, if you truly think that's the case, this one right here, can you fold it over that line? Like mm -hmm. If you fold over that line, does it land on top of itself? And Ellen's over here saying, shaking her head, no. So if you're not sure, I always have at least one person a year on that quiz or test. I hear some old couple of tests or quiz back there. So that's a quick way for you to kind of just check yourself off of there. Okay, another one here. The what shape is that next one here to be? Well, I didn't sorry, I didn't talk about that shape for us. What is the name of that shape, somebody? Trapezoid. Take us a little bit further. Not just a trapezoid, but a isosceles. Thank you. Yeah, this is a not just a trapezoid, but an isosceles trapezoid. And that's kind of the one of the special trapezoids we'll look at in the second semester. All right, let's continue on there. What's that next shape be? Yeah, stick with that one. Yeah, that appears to be a parallelogram. Okay, same question. Do we have any um, lines of reflection here? Yeah. Ellen, where's that one at? Um, if you go from like this to the base, right? Yeah, definitely not vertical or horizontal, but she was saying from one vertex to the other, right? So you're talking about the diagonal ones, mm -hmm. right? Can I get the other one as well? Yeah. Yes, I can. All right. Anything else adding up there for that parallelogram? No, just those, those two, right? Okay, so that's a parallelogram. What about this middle one? What does that appear to be? Yeah, it probably is appearing to be a right triangle. We don't know it's right, and part of the reason is they're not putting that right angle is for reflection purposes, but it appears to be right. What else does it appear to be? Mm. I wouldn't say scaling. I think it's probably going to be more isosceles. We could always measure it, but I'm pretty sure this is isosceles. But what we can do is use your patty paper. So if this is, bring those two words together, isosceles and right, what we should be happening here is trace that onto your patty paper. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we can quickly see if this is a isosceles triangle is if I fold it, and I'm hoping you realize where we're folding it, kind of right there through that right angle. And if we fold it onto the other side, is it appearing to match right there then? And if it does, we should get ourselves an isosceles triangle on there. So does it look like it's folding right there on it? Yeah. One second. It, I believe it should be off of there. So. <clears throat> this is uh, not just a right triangle appearing to be, but yeah, we bring these two together, and this is that isosceles right triangle. Okay, that's the big dude we'll talk about second semester. We've mentioned him several times throughout this year already, and we'll really get to it second semester. Uh, anything else with that isosceles right triangle? I don't think so. I think that's only one line. Okay, how about that last one? We got a couple lines, don't we? Yeah, clearly right through the uh, the middle vertically, right? That, yep, that looks good. And then, don't we have that going through all those points that are the star after that? So we have obviously more than one line of reflection happening off of there, right? Okay. So what we've just identified is uh, how many shapes there? Six shapes. Some shapes have one. Some shapes have two. Some shapes have more than one. Obviously, more than two. And that is what we're getting into is what we call reflectional symmetry. As I said, if we were to take Caleb here and cut him right down the middle vertically, can you show that here? No. No, okay, see if that's okay. So if we cut him right down the middle, if you were able to kind of fold himself like that, he should see being pretty symmetrical right there with that. So in nature as well, we have symmetry um, going on there. Now, 
on the next page here. Maybe. Come on. Let's go. Same type of question. But let's talk about it being rotational. Okay. So let's do the same thing we just kind of talked about, but let's talk about it in terms of rotations. So that hexagon to start off with. Okay. On that hexagon there, I got it. On that hexagon that's there, can you rotate that? And land on itself? Do we have rotational symmetry in the hexagon? Yeah. On that rotational symmetry, okay, uh, my follow-up question is, what's the, right? what is the smallest angle of rotation such that it will land on itself? Okay. I would say 60 as well. Now, we talked about this a little bit um, a couple weeks ago, I know, when we were doing things. Wait, that's 94. That's not what I was doing. Mm -hmm. So, as uh, Jackson was saying there, he was saying, what, 60 degrees? So, where that is coming in with this uh, regular hexagon is right there back at that center that we uh, were getting then from cutting this up equally right there because around that center we know is how many degrees 360 right divide it up equally 360 divided equally is 6 so 360 divided by 6 is so one turn of that hexagon there at the origin at the center of that gives you a rotational symmetry of what we say is 60 degrees. 60 works and then any multiple after that. If 60 works, you turn it two times, that's 120, right? You turn it three times, that's another 60, that's what, 180, and so on and so on and so on. How about a circle? Does circles have rotational symmetry? Sure does, right? Okay, and that kind of gets into that weird one of we can turn it, what, a degree? A half a degree, a quarter of a degree, an eighth of a degree, a point one degree, and so on and so on and so on. This has an infinite amount of rotational symmetry on that one. So what about the isosceles trapezoid there? Can we turn that and get it to land on itself? That's would say no. Now there is one number out there. What would you have to do though? Turn your paper all the way around. And how much of a turn is that? Hold on, not 90. That's how much? That's a full 360, right? So if you are just, you know, standing here and you do yourself that, and you mess up. Okay, 360. Okay, what we have then is a rotational symmetry there. So an isosceles trapezoid does at 360, but as we'll see in just a few minutes, we're actually going to come back and say no, it does not. 360 doesn't count. Parallelogram. Does this parallelogram have rotational symmetry then? Besides a 360. Sides of 360. Lucy? 180? I would say so as well. You got the patty paper there, right? So if you took your patty paper and made two turns of it, 180 degrees, that appears to work for you. How about an isosceles right triangle there? Anything besides a 360? Anything besides a 360? Got your patty paper, don't stare at me. I don't have patty paper. We do. I know I'm going to look at them. I'm going to. Yes, you do. All right. Does it have it on there? No. The only thing that works is a 360, right? So that doesn't. And how about that last one there? How about that star? That star, we know we can definitely turn it. My question to you is, what's the least amount of degrees there to turn it? So how many points we got on that star? We have five pointed star there, right? So it kind of goes right back to that middle there with that five pointed star. When we did that with that hexagon a few minutes ago, right there in the middle is 360 degrees. Those are all equal pieces, so 360 divided by five. And what is that? 72. It should be. So this has a rotational symmetry of what we say is 72 degrees. So if you turn that thing 72 degrees with your protractor, that is going to land exactly on top of itself. Okay?
So obviously shapes have reflectional, rotational, and then some of them have reflectional but don't have rotational, as we saw here with the isosceles trapezoid. All right, let's flip it, and let's keep talking here about the symmetry of shape. So <clears throat> we got a lot of pages here. Some of them will go pretty quickly. But as we talked about reflectional symmetry, if you can draw a line so that the figure, uh, so that the figure to one side of that line is a reflection of the other, we got ourselves reflectional symmetry. Draw me in for number three there. Okay, draw me in uh, the three lines of symmetry for that triangle right there. It's an equilateral triangle. Draw me in those three lines of reflectional symmetry there. Where do we have those at? on me and if you're not sure where they're at you got yourself some pattern paper you can always check yourself the pattern paper okay hold it find that sweet spot and put it right on top of itself okay. so where's these uh uh lines of symmetry happening here eric the points from the flat the points on the what the flat across. okay yeah from the vertex to directly across right okay so there's one and then the same idea as what he just said. There's two and there's that three. Now, when those happen, we're going to take a look at, I think when we come back in January, those are giving us actually special lines. They're called special lines in that, not, not called special lines, but they get it in that name, all right, that are special. And that specific area, that point where they all intersect at, we'll talk about that as well, okay? Uh, how about the next one there? What about that rectangle? What do we got for there? Yeah, the obvious one is what? Uh, vertical and horizontal, right? The one, again, I always get students thinking about is the diagonal. Is the diagonal working on that? You might think it does, but if you try to fold it along that diagonal, you're going to realize, again, it does not. So always check yourself. You've got yourself the patty paper there. If it's not patty paper and it's on the SAT, fold, literally fold your paper there and let's check yourself. Best we can say was what? The vertical and horizontal. Okay, um, let's see. The rectangle did not have that. But what about the square? What does it have then, Sarah? Diagonals, right? So we clearly got the middle vertically and horizontally, but then we also got one diagonal checks and two diagonals checks as well plus you along with the uh, vertical and horizontal there okay with rotational symmetry rotational symmetry and here is the kind of catch with it we saw some that worked on the other page but we said to, in order for it to make it work we had to do a full rotation 360 degrees rotational symmetry the way we define it though is if you can have the rotate more the figure more than zero, but less than 360. So it can't work for a 360. All right. On the plus sign, then right below that, does that thing have rotational symmetry? Then? And if so, how much? Take your heavy paper, and if you need to check yourself, put that plus sign on there. Yeah, we can clearly see about rotating it either clockwise or counterclockwise, and then the amount. That it does have to go as well to do that. We got ourselves uh, yes, and what is that degree of rotation? Somebody said it, yeah. 90 degrees. Again, if they don't tell you which way to rotate it, what is always our default? Counterclockwise. Okay? That's always our default. All right, uh, let's keep walking here. Let's walk to the next page. Uh, we saw that in question eight, we saw shapes that did on those. So let's take these now here, and we got four brand new, well, not brand new shapes. This is why this part of the lesson looks larger than it is, and we just talked about it. So let's skip over it, because we've done what? Uh, let's do the octagon. Okay, for the octagon, do we have ourselves some reflectional symmetry hiding in there? Yeah. Quite a few of those, right? So vertically and horizontally, and then um, where else do we have those? Yeah, and it's kind of what Jack said back a few minutes ago with like the um, opposite sides that are like parallel to one another. That's where those are coming in at as well. Okay. Um, 
how about uh, the other one, rotational? So we can definitely rotate this, but my question to you is, what's the smallest degree of rotation? What is the angle of rotation? Yeah, 360 right there, you know, around the center, and it's always going to be 360 divided by however many uh, sides we got. So as you just told me, 360 divided by 8, divided by 4 is 90, divided by again, that gives me what? Whoops, yeah, 45, it's about to right, 90 there. 45 degrees is my angle of rotation there. Finding the angle of rotation off these polygons is pretty straightforward. I'll try. Let's go with actually this next one. I say that, the equilateral triangle there. What is the degree of rotation in that one? Okay, so I always have students, for whatever reason, want to say like 60 degrees on here. And I get why 60, but 60 would do like that, okay? So as Sam was rattling off there, it's just like we did with the uh, octagon. 360 divided by inside of there, we got ourselves three, not a great picture, but 360 divided by three equal triangles are in there. 360 divided by three is that 120 degrees. So this has 120 degree angle of rotation. Okay. All right, let's continue on here. Let's see what else we got because we talked about reflections up the wazoo with those. Um, anything worthwhile on this side? Yeah, we sure aren't doing that. All right, let's talk about fonts. So we know with fonts that clearly there are some lines of reflection in there, but it all depends on what type of font that we're talking about. So um, I want to do the defaults too. Times or Arial, like that. But here, depending on the type of font that is there, some fonts have them, and then you change that font over, and all of a sudden that letter doesn't have that symmetry anymore, does it? So off this first one here, take a second, highlight which ones have a horizontal but not a vertical. On this particular page, when I ask you these questions and when I give you that quiz or test down the road, these are easy questions to get right, but also at the same time you miss because you're not reading them carefully. What do we again want? Ones that have horizontal but not vertical. So make sure you do that combination right there. Have horizontal, not vertical. Take a quick second, turn with your buddy. Do your buddy for you. Make your buddy. Okay, so as I was just seeing up here with between um, these two, they were saying you gotta have one and the other, one but not the other, right? So let's circle them out. Does A match that up? No. No, what does that have? It's got a vertical, but we don't want that, do we? All right, so what about uh, C? C does, right? Um, C has the horizontal, but not working vertically, is it? All right, what about H is the one that I can always get some people to circle. H? No, because what does H have? It's got both, right? Yeah. And how about M? No, M's got, but not the horizontal. So the only one I think we got up there is C, correct? Okay, well how about the next one? Let's kind of flip that around then. I'm going to give you some different letters. Take another quick second there, and then turn to your buddy. Uh, horizontal, what is it? Either? This one. Vertical, but not horizontal. Vertical, but not horizontal. one there. That sounds good. So that's got the vertical right down the middle there. Not so much how I drew that. Alright, Nathan. 
Let's keep going here. How about B? No. No, what's B got? It just has horizontal. Correct. Just the horizontal, so that's a no. All right. Two for two. H is no. No, why is H that good? Very good. So far, so good, Nate. And last one here. Uh, no. Why no? Because it also has both of them. All right. That's a tough question, Sam. Let's give it. Let's go. Give Nathan, a round of applause. All right. Let's keep going on here. Now let's go for the both. Take another quick second here. Talk to your buddy. How about both off of what? Z E H M. And then what we'll do that is. Um, So let's take a look here at this confidence over there. Adeline. All right. This confidence over here. Which letters have both a horizontal and vertical? Now, Nathan really set the bar high. So. I was talking about four. But well, I, well, right. We're on three, though. I'll do three. <laughs> Chill there, bud. We will, we'll wait on there, Einstein. All right. All right. Uh, so letter three, or number three. Um, Z? No. Now, same thing with some uh, with the um, the parallelogram and rectangle. I always have students want to think that maybe one of those works. Does Z have anything in there? No. no. I always have somebody thinking about it. If you're not sure, use that patty paper. Maybe think of the vertical or think of that horizontal. But the A or sorry, that Z does not have either one of those. Um, e, you said. E, e, you said no. But what does it have? Just the. Just the horizontal. H, you said did, down both middle and, or vertically and horizontally. And how about M? No. Nope. That's only got the vertical, right? Okay. And then, take a second if you haven't done the last row yet. Which ones have rotational? Okay. So I got Nathan and Adeline here shooting off pretty good. I'm just going to finish this one off here. <laughs> this calls you out a little bit, so make sure you check your work with the buddy, make sure you're ready to go. No pressure on you, don't do this. The, the, giving away answers. Some of them are, if you look at quickly, you hate that it has one or the other, but it's just like if you do the whole thing, it messes up some people. Zoom All right, let's go, Lydia. Which one's got rotational? Z. All right. In order for Z to work, follow the question is, what's that term going to be? It's got to be a 180. How about W? No. No, the only way for W to happen again would be a 360, but we do not count 360. Okay. No. No. And last but not least, M? No. No. Okay. No. Let's do this again here, Lydia. What I need you now to do then is take your left hand, put it over your left eye. How about now? Can you read the bottom line? <laughs> and now, now, okay. Every time I see this page every year, I think of I'm at the eye doctor. So you can't see it? Oh, you can? Oh, I cannot see that. Anymore? I, uh, I think I found my limit off of that one. Yeah, I'm not been able to see for a while. No, oh, okay. <laughs> well, I think we got 20, 2020 maybe. I don't know. I can't read that. You can't read that? Oh, okay. You got contacts on it? No, no. Glasses. Oh, you got glasses? Just I'm far sighted though, so. Got you. My mom's eyes are so bad, she's legally blind. I get the stigmatism on mine. It's fine. All right, let's keep going here. Uh, Lady, I don't think you, do you need glasses? I have 60-20 vision. I don't know what that means, but okay. That's <laughs> up to 80, right? No, it's not. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm not a dentist. All right. So let's get going here. Um, don't care. Something like that. All right. Let's finish this off here. Okay. How about <clears throat> lines of symmetry? I'm going to give you a minute. 
I'd like you to draw in the lines of symmetry here for this uh, these four. We got a few different shapes there. And all it says is line of symmetry, so just a reflection of symmetry. Don't worry about the rotation. Beat this hexagon to death. So, with the hexagon there, we got some verticals in there, right? We got a horizontal, and we have some diagonals in there? Sure do. Isosceles right triangle. Now they've officially defined it as isosceles right triangle. And what do we have for that? Yeah, and it's coming out of the uh, right angle. And as it comes out of that right angle, what's it got to be true to that opposite side? So it comes in, can it go at a bit of an angle? No. What's it got to be true about it? Perpendicular. Okay, that's the, yeah, I was looking for that word of it's coming in and it has to be actually perpendicular right there. Yep. Okay, on the rhombus, which is like a parallelogram, but what's the difference with the rhombus and the parallelogram? Rhombus is crickets. What's true about the rhombus, people? Makes it rhombus. A rhombus is a parallelogram, but it's a parallelogram of rhombus. Yeah, I know. I hate those type of questions too. But this is X kind of is a rectangle a square or a square a rectangle? Yeah, it's the exact same question, except it's a parallelogram of rhombus. So, what makes it a rhombus is all sides are, yeah, all sides are equal. Do we have any lines of reflection in there? Yeah. Where at? Diagonal. So if we were to say, I'm assuming you're talking about those right there, from what vertex to vertex. If we were able to take the patty paper, trace it, and fold it over, we got ourselves uh, symmetry. And last one there. How about the uh, pentagon? Vertical. Definitely vertical. Anything horizontal? Okay, no. vertical. Anything else though? Yeah. I'm pretty sure if I go. Oh, sorry. See if I can do that again for you. I can't get that. Oh, why? The other one's not parallel. I guess that was the best I can do. All right, but those also have the other ones, right? From the vertex to its opposite side, it's got to be perpendicular, there, right? So it's got one from each vertex to its opposite side. Okay? All right. So that's a little bit of reflectional and rotational symmetry for the day. Let me get your assignment out here.
like, if I do, I can learn to ride your dogs. Aww. All right, so with this entry here on the assignment, tomorrow we'll come in and we'll write questions. We'll do a little more work with that. Actually, we'll talk more about the polygon. And then for the assignment tomorrow, quiz review, all preparation on Friday. We'll also um, talk about the previous quiz. We'll get those to you either tomorrow or today. Okay. 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 Okay.